Good morning, this is Brian Wallace. I'm the Director of Marketing at Kiefer Consulting, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar this morning. Um, this morning's webinar is called Ready, Fire, Aim. It's making the case for project readiness. And our presenter today is our very own CEO, Greg Kiefer. So um, we're glad that you were able to join us today. We do have a couple of just housekeeping items. There is a uh, questions uh, uh, module in the panel on, on the side of the, um, the WebEx screen. So during the webinar, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put those into the question section, and we'll try to answer them as they, as they come in. Uh, but it brings me great, great pleasure to be able to introduce you to uh, today's presenter, uh, Greg Kiefer. Uh, Greg, take it from here. Yep, thank, thank you for your time, and thank you for attending. Um, as all of you are aware, some of you are project managers, some of you obviously participate on projects. Um, what, we, what we're looking forward to today is to actually share some of our best practices with you around our readiness assessment, why we created it, and the value that it adds to your project to help you get ready. So I'd like to start out with a quick poll, just to make sure that you're paying attention, but also um, just to identify, get a better idea of who you guys are. So if you go ahead and click on the, um, the poll option there, um, take a minute to go through that, I'll give you 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. I think we'll uh, close the poll Yeah, we've already got a few people that have um, responded to this. So we'll go ahead and share those results. I think Brian can do that? Or? Yep. Brian's going to share these uh, results with you guys here. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll share I'll share the answers if you can't see them. Okay. Um, we've got 56% are project managers and interested in best practices. 22% are not project managers but seem interested in the topic. 11% are here because they'd like to get the key for project readiness template. And 11% are here because their boss told them they should attend. <laughs> <laughs> so the quick agenda here, I'll give you a quick overview of, of who I am and then um, about Keeper Consulting. And um, this is a pr pretty exciting opportunity for us to share this readiness assessment we've built over the uh, century the last 28 years of our experience. Um, again, my name is Greg Kiefer. I've been involved with Kiefer Consulting. I created it 28 years ago. Um, we're focused on building um, successful solutions for our customers and always improving our business processes. We're also focused on giving back to the community. We've been doing this for 28 years, and we continue to do it. And you'll see it via our webinar, via the blogs, and also all of the presentations that we give around the community to share the knowledge that we've acquired so, so that you can benefit from it and so we can learn from your feedback. Quick thing about Kiefer Consulting. Again, been in business 28 years. Um, we're serving customers throughout California, but now, and this year, we've expanded to two additional locations. We're headquartered in Folsom. We have an office in San Francisco, and now we have an office in St. Louis. And we're looking to continue to expand our presence uh, geographically throughout throughout the country. Um, we focus on um, three different technologies. The majority of our business is in the SharePoint space uh, for collaboration, extranets, public websites. And we also team with other um, leading partners in the industry to deliver um, outstanding solutions to our customers. Let's talk about the project, project management, just some success factors around that. Some tips. We have various um, different uh, metrics in here in the presentation, but this one's actually focused on what, what makes a project successful. We kind of focused on three different areas. The first area is making sure that you clearly define your project goals and objectives. Making sure they're outlined, make sure people understand them, make sure they align with your strategic direction for your organization. The next area that you need to focus on is that critical part of executive sponsorship. Making sure you get that top-down commitment from the executive sponsor, make sure that they actually communicate that to the organization or the part of the organization that's impacted by the change that you're going to implement as a result of your project. Make sure they stay engaged throughout the life of the project so that they are there when you need them to support you, to um, communicate changes again to the organization, and actually participate actively in your project so you can be successful. And the last part is just around the support side of it. Do you have the internal resources that you need? Do they clearly understand what you're trying to achieve? Um, are you also supporting the, the user adoption side of it? Are you thinking about when I'm making a change to my organization as a result of the completion of my project or the, the progression of my project? Do they understand 
what's going to how it's going to impact them, and are they ready for that change? So some, just a few qualities. There's hundreds. We just picked three of a successful project manager. One of the critical things that a project manager needs to do is stay engaged in the project. Sometimes project managers take on too many projects. Staying engaged and focused on a project is one of the critical things for making sure that project's successful. They get too many projects on their plate. They tend to get diverted and not give the project the attention that it needs. Another area that's critical for a successful project manager is to maintain transparency, making sure that they are communicating to their stakeholders, which includes their customers and their executive sponsors, where they're at on their project, the issues, the risk, the schedule, the documents, the deliverables, making sure that's all transparent and communicated to the audiences that it's applicable to. We actually leverage SharePoint for that and collaboration workspaces and project workspaces. Workspaces. The other area that's critically important is open communication with the stakeholder. When you go to the steering committee meeting, when you actually participate with those stakeholders, it's important that you actually maintain that open relationship with them so you can close the door and have those candid conversations with them that you have to have um, throughout the life of your project. And you can be open with them about the challenges you're facing in, in delivering a solution that's important to your business. So what happens if you don't do a readiness assessment? You don't have to do ours. Um, you can do your own readiness assessment. Um, throughout the many years of delivering solutions, again, hundreds of solutions, we found out over time that sometimes we don't always ask the right questions. And sometimes we're not prepared to ask those questions in a timely manner when we should be asking those questions. And sometimes we're not actually in alignment with what we thought we were going to deliver versus what the customer expected us to deliver. So we actually put this assessment together to actually make sure that we can ask as many questions up front that may potentially negatively impact our the solution that we're building and make sure we're in alignment. These are just some examples of if you do a readiness assessment, if you do have the conversations up front, we want you to be successful. So the line going across there, the horizontal line is everything went great. It always doesn't go great. And sometimes people leave a project that you depend on. Sometimes it loses priority. Sometimes you have budget constraints. Things, things do impact the project. But it's important if you do a readiness assessment to have those conversations up front. Maybe some of you have been involved in the project where people ask a lot of questions. You thought they understood what you, wanted them, what, what you should have delivered to them or what you thought they wanted. So hopefully you won't have these questions that are, are presented to you. Um, one of the ones that we, we hear on occasion is the sales guy said. Another one is there isn't uh, going to be work for us. Well, there is going to be work for you because you're involved as a resource in the project and you have a critical role in the project. Um, how come anybody didn't ask me what I wanted or what I needed? I thought this project was about me. <laughs> so there's, there's all these different questions that come up. And again, the readiness assessment is making sure that you are aware of the different things that need to be conveyed to the participants in your project. Let's take a quick poll here again. Brian's going to take another poll. Yep. And, and Brian will tell us the, the results. So go ahead and get, get on your computer if you're not actively involved. You're actively listening, but now you're actually clicking. So go ahead and take the poll. Give you 10 seconds. Countdown. They're still coming in, Greg. I'm getting just a couple more seconds here. All right. All right. We'll close the poll. So what we have here is um, how are you currently assessing project readiness? 18% uh, says they have a project readiness assessment. 27% say we have questions, but we don't have a formalized document. And 55% of the folks on the call do not have an assessment at all. So it gives you kind of a little bit of uh, so the 55%, um, actually the, the second category too, will actually find that this is actually valuable. So, and we'll talk about how we actually develop this readiness assessment as well, and talk about um, how we've developed it and continue to um, evolve the document over time. So let's jump into the readiness assessment. Um, the readiness assessment, there's some, some questions that you might want to ask at the beginning. Um, one thing that actually helps you with it is, is actually risk management. 
identifying the goals of your project, making sure as, as a project manager you understand what it is you're trying to achieve, and what type of risk you might have associated with your project. We have categories on there and questions associated with risk. I see a lot of the questions are all affiliated with risk. Um, we understand that executive sponsorship is critical. So when you're having the conversation, you're going through the readiness assessment with your executive sponsors, we need to make sure that you have strong, dedicated um, resources from an executive level, whether that's just your manager or department. It doesn't have to be a senior level executive in the corporation. But make sure that they understand what their role is and make sure that as a project manager, it's clearly identified what it is that you expect from them and vice versa. <clears throat> the clear vision part is another area that's actually critical. Is before you begin, everybody needs to be on the same page. We understand over time when a business requirement is identified um, and two years later an RFP, if this happens to be one that goes out to bid for a vendor, two years later a procurement staff actually drafts an RFP and releases it. Two and a half year later, once the contract's approved, you actually start the work. And so you need to make sure and have a conversation in front is, has any of the business requirements changed? Have they been clearly identified in the RFP? Are we on the same page? And what the vendor proposed is in alignment with what the RFP asked for. So those are really good questions to ask up front is, is everybody in alignment? And is the business still in alignment with what um, is being proposed as a solution? Things have changed maybe in the last two years. So another one is outcome measurement. When you're doing the readiness assessment, we, we actually give you questions to help you get in alignment but how are you going to measure success? So you want to get that big green Sharpie marker out the end of your project, check off a box that says, our project was successful. We recently launched a website where we had probably 70 people in the room that participated in helping provide content to that website. Um, they all celebrated, and they knew what the big check mark was for because they all participated in launching that new website. Um, and that's, that was because they clearly identified what the goals and objectives were up front. And they also determined what the outcome was. It was launched my website with new content with the new face of my organization. So one of the goals you always have to remember is always find the, the assets that you need to actually continue to improve your odds of success. All of us as project managers, all of us as team members on a project, all of us as executive sponsors want our projects to be successful. So leverage the tools that we're giving you, leverage the tools that you can pull off the internet that allow you to do that Le and leverage the tools you have internally to be successful. So how did this document evolve? Um, we've been in business 28 years. We've had hundreds and hundreds of projects we've delivered in lots of different industries. We continue to um, deliver projects for 30, 40 a year. Um, we continue to contribute back to this document and ask the questions um, as the lessons learned um, aspect of contributing to it. We also share a lot of our artifacts and intellectual property with the community. So through the best practices of other project managers and team members that have been on projects, we solicit their feedback um, from the local uh, project management chapters, PMI, and a number of other institutions that we share our intellectual property with, both technical intellectual property and just business-related um, content. Let's, deep, let's, let's go into some of the questions that we ask. Um, the actual readiness assessment is divided into seven categories. You can take a minute and look at some of these. Talk about processes and the people involved, internal factors. Um, if you're dealing with government uh, entities, both at a federal and state level, <clears throat> the vendor scorecard is a topic that's of uh, extreme interest to both vendors and for the different um, agencies that you're working with. <clears throat> Here's a few sample questions. There's probably about 10, maybe 12, sometimes 15 questions in each of the categories. So you'll actually have that at the end of this presentation. Project success. If you've been on a project before, which all of you have, one of the key factors that's really important to you is making sure that you have the evangelist that's on your team. Someone from the business side that you're helping solve the solution with. Someone that can actually be the evangelist that says, we are a change agent. We want to participate in your project. It's critical asking the question up front is who is that person? Or who are those people that are going to be involved in that? Another area is to make sure that you have the right people and not only the right people, but the timing to involve and engage a steering committee if you happen to have a steering committee. It may just be your executive sponsor. 
it may be a, a group of people, especially if you're implementing a solution that spans the entire organization. When we implement SharePoint solutions, we often do intranets. Intranets impact an entire organization. Um, you think of enterprise solutions like enterprise resource planning solutions. Those also impact an organization, the entire organization, probably every department within your organization. So again, you have to make sure that you identify the right people to participate. If you're involved in, in government, vendor scorecards are becoming very popular. So we actually pulled some of the questions actually from the current vendor scorecard from the state of California that actually hasn't been implemented yet. But when it does get implemented, it's already in our, um, our readiness assessment. They're focused on outcome measurement primarily. What, is the, what factors are you going to measure as a success? And when they actually score the vendor, um, and in the end, in, in, after the project is completed, they want to say, you know, did you actually deliver the solution we asked you to deliver? And how well did you do that? So those questions are already incorporated into our readiness assessment. The scope, complexity, is always, is always a, 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 an area of concern, whether it's a simple project or whether it's a complex project. If it's a really complex project, that means there's a lot of moving parts and probably a lot of people and a lot of risk. Um, you need to talk about those up front and, and determine and assess the complexity of that project. We already talked about scope alignment. Again, is everybody on the same page? And has that vision been communicated to all of the stakeholders that are involved in your project? The worst thing you do is be one of those people that's asking a question toward the end of the project saying, well, I wasn't involved. I didn't know. My, my, my feedback didn't um, actually um, get incorporated into the solution that I needed to have when we got done. So. Um, Another area, business and political environment. If you work in government, you may work for an executive sponsor that's an appointed official. When there's a new governor, they bring in new people. So when you start your project, you need to be conscientious of the fact of where are we at in the life cycle of my boss being um, moved out and a new person coming in. Um, you also need to make sure that, that that project is clearly documented from a goals and objectives and an outcome measurement standpoint. So when the new person comes in, that you can get in alignment with them quickly and say, this is why my project's important, and this is where we're at in the project, and here's my SharePoint portal that you can look at and says the status of my project. Another area that we ask is where does it rank in priority? We recently did a, a really large internet for a, a state client that actually had um, our project ranked in the top five of the goals and objectives for the executives for that organization. Um, that's a nice place to be. You get the commitment from not only the executive team, but also their resources to actually support and deploy that, that, that intranet that we've built for them. If you're toward the bottom of the list, you're going to have a lot of challenges of resource commitment and actually being able to retain those resources. Um, some other areas, business processes, you guys can kind of look at that. Again, are the processes mature that you're trying to implement? If they're not, it's difficult to automate those. Um, another one is just internal factors. What does this project depend on? Those are something you need to ask again up front. If there's dependencies on a project, we just launched a, another website for another state agency where it was actually dependent upon a new system going live. If that system's feeding content to the website they were trying to launch and it's delayed, you need to have questions on what do we do? Do we launch the website where we made the commitment to launch it, or do we delay it based on the completion of another project? If it's waiting on content, to go live if it's not a website or it's a line of business application and you can't go live, you need to understand what those repercussions are and develop um, mitigation plans for those. And what's the impact on the organization? Again, internal factors. Is how broad is the solution you're trying to implement? Um, how many people are involved or engaged in that, in that solution? And has that been communicated to them on how they're going to be impacted? Around the people side, this is directed specifically at your team. It's actually working on the project, do they have the skills to actually deliver that solution that you need to deliver? Whether they're technology skills, whether they're business process skills, whether they're user experience skills. And you need to make sure that if they don't have the skills to that, that you actually get the right people on the team that can deliver it when you need to deliver it or make an early investment in those people so they can be successful. The end result is we want you to be successful. And this, this should help you with, with being successful in the project. So what happens in the end? You do your assessment. At the end of it is an optional scoring 
uh, section. You can create your own metrics for scoring this. Uh, but the end result is you're going to have a gut feel when you're finished with this, and the people that participate in this readiness assessment are either going to give it a green light, a yellow light, or a red light. On occasion, you should not do the project. You should reassess the project, realign your goals and objectives, and then reassess it to make sure that you can be successful. Nobody wants to st start a project when you know you're going to fail. I, I haven't been involved in any work that you want to do that. <laughs> so the, the actual thing here is if you get, say, you get 88% score, there's a gap. <clears throat> so when there's a gap, you need to develop an action plan, whether it's change management, whether it's expect executive sponsorship. Take the categories where, you, where you're scored low, develop an action plan to address those categories so you can increase your, your chances of success. Again, project readiness assessment should help your organization. We're letting you use our assessment that's been developed over the last 28 years of our knowledge, as well as the knowledge of the people that participated and helped craft it, including the Department of Technology. I have to give them credit as well for developing the project management framework. You'll see some of the recent questions they've incorporated in, um, from their assessment in this readiness assessment as well. So this is where we want to be. This is where we want to help you be successful. This is where we want you to end up with, with a, a star at the end of your project and have a better chance of project success. On time, within budget. This is exactly what I needed. All these different things that you want to hear from your customers where you get the high five moment and you can celebrate. That's what we want to help you achieve. And we want to start during the initiation of the project phase to actually start with asking the questions that you should have asked at the beginning and so we hope you actually leverage this within, within your organization. Here's a link to the website. Um, you can email me as well if you have questions. Here's my email address. We'll share all these slides with you in, in addition to the video. Um, and we'll also send you a link out so you don't have to write this down. The um, next webinar, we do a couple webinars a month, is actually by Matt Green, one of our very enthusiastic um, developers um, with expertise both in SharePoint, user experience, and in, in the Nintex platform. So put this on your calendars. You'll also get a notification um, via our newsletter that goes out every month as well. That's, all, that's a great presenter. Um, if you're interested in free training, some of it's free, some of it's paid for, we're participating in all of these events the remainder of this year. Three of them are, are actually in the same week. <laughs> so it's going to be an intense conference week. Uh, Public Sector Partners is delivering one on November 1st. It's an all-day event. It's free. You can sign up. SharePoint Saturday is also the same week. It's free. You can sign up if you want to learn more about SharePoint. Now, the Project Management Institute is offering a um, project um, development day. That's also on November 4th. That's a Friday. Um, I think there's a fee for that. You'll have to go online and look at that to see if there's a fee. And then SP TechCon is coming up in December, which is a, a, a three-day conference or four-day conference. Um, where we're actually participating as a gold partner, and we're actually raffling off tickets for that. It's about 1700 1800 bucks for that conference. That's one of the top SharePoint conferences in the country now um, with some of the top speakers as well, one of which is one of our team members. If you want more information on a regular basis from us, go ahead and sign up, share this with your um, team members. Um, you can subscribe to our newsletter online. You can also follow us on social media. We cover all the different social media platforms. And contact us if you have questions about um, your projects, if you have challenges with your projects, if you want to know more about how we are successful on our projects, we're more than happy to share that and engage in a conversation with, with you and your team members. We'd like to open it up for questions. So, right. So if you have any questions, please um, use the panel, um, the, uh, the GoToWebinar panel uh, on the side of your screen. Uh, there's a little drop down for questions. You're able to enter them there. Um, if we don't, uh, get any in the next couple uh, couple of minutes, we'll um, be able to take those questions offline. So please, please uh, either contact us uh, through Greg's email or the email that you uh, respond to the email that we'll be able to send out after this webinar when we conclude. But we will definitely be sending out um, uh, a link to the uh, project readiness assessment. You'll be able to download that. And when this webinar closes off, uh, there will be a quick uh, survey. It's just two questions. We'd love your feedback. Um, we, uh, like, like Greg was saying, we host one or two webinars a month on different topics. Um, this is one of the first times we've done anything that's been less uh, technical, maybe more business related. So 
Uh, if you're interested in, in more uh, content like this and more webinars like that, please uh, please let us know because we, we'd like to we'd like to keep this going if we can. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions, but uh, this webinar has been recorded and it will be available for future viewing. And um, you will also get a link to that um, uh, in the email uh, as this when this when this uh, meeting concludes. Well, thank you for joining us, Greg. You want to uh, thank, thank you very much for participating and letting us um, helping us develop this readiness assessment for the ones that did participate in that. And also, we look forward to your feedback on how you leverage this within your organizations. Thanks again for your time. Thank you.